Hello, good afternoon. I uh, hope everybody is well. Welcome to the Love Swim Workshop. Hopefully if everything's going okay, we should be live. So here we are, um, Monday afternoon again. And as you can see, we've got something different in the vice again. We're coming up to Valentine's Day, so different bespoke requests. We're a lot of what we're actually doing on now is, is we're, we're sort of beyond Valentine's Day, really. So we're looking, um, we're looking at different spoons that we're making for people uh, after uh, Valentine's Day itself. So we're always making different bespoke spoons. So I'll just show you a couple that we are working, that we've been working on. There's those two there that we've been working on recently. So you can see different symbols. It's great fun really doing the bespoke spoons. Another two there, um, you know, again, different symbols. Sorry, I just blown the dust in front of everybody. So yeah, that is what we really do. That's our day job. You may, may notice a little bit more background noise today. Dad's on the saw. Uh, we've got work going on across the road as well. Um, thanks to that work that's going on across the road, uh, our neighbour, they, they've given us some oak, which I'll get Dad to bring across later and, and show everyone for you all to see. Uh, some, yeah, some lovely stuff, but a good example again for how we, we source the wood. So, what we're going to do, we're going to demonstrate the process of hand carving. The one that we got on screen at the moment, um, we're working on a piece of oak. And I'm just going to demonstrate the process. This is a bespoke spoon that we're working on. And the bespoke work then, that has very much kept us going uh, throughout this sort of strange times that we're living and working in. So um, we're just going to demonstrate for you all to see the process of hand carving. A bespoke spoon. There we are, just coming through the door, we've got Thomas the Woodcarver. Pronoun that, good afternoon. Pronoun that. Um, we're down, as some of you uh, who, who sort of join us regularly, we're down here in West Wales. It's a cold day today, isn't it? Ooh, what the heck? Thomas Woodcarver's stoking up the fire there for us because, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a chilly one today. But it's um, probably about right, isn't it, for the time of year? It is, yeah, but it's, I think, a bit of a, a bit of cold weather. It, it, it shouldn't do us, uh, it shouldn't do our environment around here any harm at all, should it? So, oh, we've got a, we got a message on there. Two seconds, just check who's joining us. Oh. Could a person use a Dremel? Yes, yes. Yeah, you can use a Dremel. Popular. Yeah, you'll see the. Um, uh, the, the Dremel carving has become quite a, a, a popular, it's become quite a popular thing. We've got a couple of Dremels, um, which Dad is just bringing out to show you. One there, for anybody who's not there sure what the Dremel is. That's, yeah, for anyone who's not familiar with the Dremel, which I'm sure most people probably would be. Yeah, we got one there. So yeah, you can use a Dremel for wood carving. Just to explain, you have different cutters on the... That's right. So you'll see there's different, Dad's just showing the, the different cutters. Yeah, you can use a Dremel. Um, there's no sort of rules or regs. We stick to hand carving. It's um, very versatile. It's a good bit of kit. And you'll see on YouTube itself, you'll see different videos where people demonstrate wood carving with, with a Dremel. So yeah, no reason why you, you can't use a Dremel to do wood carving. Um, a lot of it comes down to personal preference and your background, you know, what you sort of think and feel about certain things. I think yourself, Dad, you use the Dremel more than myself, haven't you? Yeah, it, it especially... Didn't suit me, I'll be on, honest with you. some of the um, complicated spoons... When you rough um, it out, isn't it, for doing things like yeah. links, seeds, stuff like that, sometimes a, a Dremel can be a useful bit of kit for taking a bit out. Oh, there we are. We just slipped through that. We were trying to leave that bit in. Spot the deliberate mistake. We've got Yelly joining us as well. Say, you're going to say hello to everyone, Yelly? She's gone shy. Hola. You can say hola if you want to. Hola. There we are. So Yelly's here as well. 
You'll have to bring across, Yelly, once you've packed the spoon. Once you pack the spoon there, Yelly, you'll have to bring it across to show everyone. So Yelly's preparing the love spoon. She's in the oh, workshop. Yeah, show you before, before it's wrapped. Yeah, so Dad's going to show everybody the love spoon we've had ordered earlier that Yelly's just come in to prepare. Whereabouts is it, Did? There it is. There we go. So there we are. That's the love spoon that Yelly is going to uh, prepare this afternoon. So that's going to be uh, finding its way out. Oh, it was a little tiny. Well, I just noticed something on there it. There we are. Well, so, yeah, we'll have a well there's going to be a little bit of work to do on that spoon before it goes out. Now, for those of you watching demonstration, the first thing that I've done in this carving is made a mistake. So there we are, what we do when it goes wrong. Basically, we, we cut out, as I was talking, I cut out a bit too much of the, um, what do you call the leg on the, on a bird? A leg. <laughs> like, that's completely gone. It's like the, the claws, would it be the claws? Yeah. It's completely gone out of my head. Yeah, I, I basically went straight for the claws, so I wasn't intending on doing that, but I made a mistake straight away, so there you go. You can find out what happens when it goes wrong. Do we panic? Do we worry about it? No, we get on with it and just carve the whole thing a little bit deeper into the wood. So what I'm trying to do, for those of you who sort of tuned in to learn a little bit about wood carving and sort of improve your wood carving or get some ideas, um, share some thoughts. Oh, sorry, we've got another comment. I'm just starting out scroll sawing them. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, now if you're starting out with scroll sawing, yeah, brilliant. You can tie in things like the Dremel, you can tie in the carving, all sorts of different things that you can do. So yeah, if you're, you're getting into the woodworking and you're doing different things, yeah, try out different stuff, see what suits you. Back to this one. Um, what we're doing then, we're carving, uh, it's a little blue tit, and this is sort of typical of what people will ask for. Basically, we get asked for what's, what sort of symbols do you put on bespoke spoons? It's everything and anything. So whatever we get asked for, we, we carve on, on the spoons and you get asked to do all sorts of different things. So if you're starting out with woodworking, wood, wood carving and things like that, um, what you basically do when you have a bespoke request like this, the first thing I will select what part of the carving is most sort of challenging, what's gonna get me thinking the most, I will select to do that first. So in this case, we we got a we got the entwined hearts with the J's in, we got a we got a, a, a rose, twist on the stem, and then we got this blue tit at the top. And that is basically what would sort of get me thinking the most. So I'll go straight into carving that to sort of deal with it first. The first thing then we're thinking of, it's sitting on a branch, so we're thinking about layers. I think we have another comment on there. Do you want to check what that one was? Okay, so I'm just starting out school sewing. I've seen, seen that one. Workshop. Hello, oh, everyone. hello, Tommy. Thank you for joining us again. Great to have you with us. Right, if you can just have a look at this one, Dave, before. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's a different one. There we are, that's a different spoon that we're, we're now possibly, um, what it is, see, is I hand carve everything ready for being ordered. So, so we're just checking which that's is. That's a better one, isn't it? Yeah, although I think, does it need a little bit in the finishing? We're having, a, we're having two conversations at the same time. Getting back to this carving. Well, um, we're just, just gonna oil it here. Yeah, a little bit of oil we're on it. Back to we'll bring that it back one because you can show him the yeah. tiniest mark in there. Yeah, what it is, both of us noticed it. There's a little tiny, tiny mark on the heart there. And we, we basically wouldn't be happy sending it out with that tiny mark. That lens is a good one, so hopefully it might have picked that up. Back to this carving again. Um, what I'm doing is we're working on the different layers. So because the uh, blue tip, because it's sitting on a branch, we got to decide what layers we're going to push back. So the branch, we're sort of pushing that behind the blue tip. And that's ultimately with your wood carving, with your woodworking, it is choosing the layers, the levels, what things we want to push back and what things that we want to actually bring out. So we're just pushing that right back. And that then, that gives you sort of depth to your wood carving. Now it's good fun doing stuff like this because we've done a few different birds and things like that, but it's always fun. It's not something that we're sort of doing on a daily basis. So the rose and the entwined hearts and things like that, that's something that 
I'd probably carve, well, in the, in the course of a year, I mean, in Twined Hearts, I will carve several hundred of those every year. The rose is sort of similar. It's a, it's a symbol that sort of crops up and is popular uh, on a regular basis. I'm just going to stop because we've got a couple of other comments on there. Midnight Joker's joined us. Morning, Jennifer. Great to have you all with us. Brilliant. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully, hopefully you'll enjoy this uh, live stream and hopefully it'll be useful. So yeah, we're just pushing that branch right back and it's sort of going at an angle as well. So the idea, this part of the branch will probably be a little bit higher in the woods than the back part of the branch. So what I'm trying to create then is that effect that the wood is sort of going, going almost a, a little bit like a, a 45 degree angle. So by, um, by just pushing it back at the top, just keep pushing it back in the wood, it creates that effect that we're working at a 45 degree angle. Now for those of you who are interested, the uh, wood, which hopefully is everyone, the wood that we're using for this one is a piece of oak. Uh, for those of you who've been with us before, we use recycled oak, so it's a reclaimed piece of wood. And um, I find that, the, yeah, it, it's, it's a piece of furniture oak. I find that's really good for us to use because I find it's quite soft, it's quite nice for working in. As some of the more modern oak that we have can be a little bit more tricky. Right, so we're starting to get our shapes. We're just going to bring those feet, the feet, of course, they will be, the claws and the legs of the bird, they will be behind um, the body to a degree. So we're pushing them back as well a little bit. We want the body in the sort of foreground, the legs in the midground, wrap the round, trying to create the effect of wrapping round the branch that it's sitting on. And then the back ground is, is sort of made up from the branch itself. I'm just going to go around the front again because we've got a few more comments, see if there's any questions need answering. There we are. No, everybody's okay. Remember, any questions, get them into us and we'll do our best to answer them. Now this loves me as well. While we're in the early stages, just to show you, this was the first time we marked it out. So you can see, piece of furniture out that we were going to be working on. Started working on the bowl and we got this. There's a mark in the bowl. Don't know if you can see that on the camera. Hopefully you can. Excuse me. Um, and unfortunately, there is a, a mark that runs right the way through this piece of wood. So you can do things about it. You know, you can sort of whiten it and things like that to sort of um, try and cover it and stuff like that. But we, we didn't think it was worth pursuing it with this piece of wood. So that is why basically we, we remarked it and, and started over again. But it gives you an idea of the sort of things that happen. You know, we're all woodworkers and wood is a natural material. Unfortunately, from time to time, you will have issues and, and things crop up like that. And you've got to make a decision. Are you going to try and carry on and possibly have a, a problem later on? or maybe the customer is not happy with it, or are you going to start again on a new piece of wood? So we took the decision with this one that it was best to start over and mark the love spoon out again. Two seconds, I think we have got a question there, don't we? Do you stop the tools or just use a stone? Uh, we do both. So what we do is uh, the main system we use for sharpening Thank you for your question as well, because it's great. Any questions, get them in, because um, it gives us plenty to uh, to talk about. Yeah, what we do, we use we use a Tormek, which I, anyone who's familiar with it, you'll know it's it's a it's a bit of an expensive system to buy. And you basically we use an external angle gouges, so we sharpen on that reverse edge. You'll get a little burr on the inside. Take that burr off. And then there's stropping wheels and honing wheels on the uh, on the Tormek itself. And so that is what we will use then to bring it up to a good finish. So you're starting off on the whetstone for sharpening on the external angle. You've then got honing wheels to take the burr off. So you, once you've done that sharpening, you get a little burr. 
Once you've got that light burr, you then take it off and polish, strop the metal to polish it. Uh, any of you, you'll have noticed last week, Dad was demonstrating some, uh, some sharpening and he actually strops on his trousers. So a fantastic way for ripping your trousers. But it works, does the job. Let's just check two seconds on there. I'm just gonna close that two seconds just to see. Yeah, no other questions. Any other questions though, get them into us. We're more than happy to uh, answer and always keen to try and help out if there's anything that you'd like to know about. So this one, we're still building up these layers. So I'm going around the outside. You can also see then, if you're new here, what we do for a bespoke spoon like this, we design it all out on paper. We like a nice symmetrical design. So we've got that line going down the center. Um, we then draw out our design. So we know we've got it nice and symmetrical, draw it all on there and then use those lines as guidelines for us to follow. But no rules or regs. Some people do it freehand. Do it however you want to. Some people use a coping saw, we use a scroll saw. Yeah, whatever techniques, whatever ideas, whatever approach suits yourself, that's the best one to use. When it comes to the gouges then as well, you were mentioning the sharpening, we use vintage gouges. This one here is a beauty, it's a Herring Brothers. And that one there, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it'll actually, it'll actually flex. It's a little bit loose in the handle, but it does actually flex back and forth. Beautifully made, fantastic gouge to work with. So we're just building up these different layers. So we're gonna come across the top there. And what I wanna do, because the, the shape, we're thinking about the shape of the bird as well. So we're just gonna round we're going to round the uh, the bird off. So as we're going along, we're building up different layers. We're getting our different shape in the design as well. Just like so. And as I said, it's nice doing different things, carving different designs as we go. Because I sit down to carve then, I'm going to do most of the carving that I can get done facing you know, with this direction of the grain. So going in that direction. And then once I've done all I can do, I'm then gonna turn it round in the vise and start carving it back in the other direction. There we are. Did you have that spoon to show us? So you've just been preparing a spoon. So just to give everybody an idea of how we prepare our spoons. I think Yelly ran off before I had a chance to ask her. There you go. So you can see Yelly has now packed that up, ready for us to get in the post, and hopefully that'll arrive before uh, Valentine's Day. There we go. And that one there, that love spoon as well, that was a, another piece of, of recycled oak. So we're just building up those layers, <coughs> starting to bring out that beautiful colour, that golden colour of the oak. And I'm just going to work, we got the, the sort of top layer is going to be the wing itself and the head will be the, the top layer. So whilst I've got those lines in there, I'm going to make use of them, carve them into the wood. So creating that stop cut, so just coming around the outside of there. So once we created that stop cut in the woods, we can use that to cut down into the wood itself. Let's have a little look. We're just going to shape it the other way as well. And yeah, we're just bringing out that shape. And then afterwards, we will put a, a few little lines on the wing and that's going to create the effect of feathers. So that's the, the idea about it. Now the nice thing, because we do, um, because we've, over the years, you know, we've started doing more and more things like the live streaming, the videos, the filming and stuff like that. It gets you doing stuff with, with the camera and things like that. And that I find is, is useful for the carving because you start to, you know, I, I, last year I did quite a bit of photography of animals and wildlife and things like that. And it gets you looking at things and I do find that it helps out with your carving because through the photography, you, you see things and you see it differently. 
And it's, it does definitely, for, for me then, gives you ideas, gives you thoughts, and it gets you thinking about those little bits of details, those little details that can really make things that much more distinctive. Just gonna check again. I think we've got a, another question there possibly. Uh, what's the best wood to start out with, hardwood or softwood? Good question. Um, I'm just gonna grab a piece of wood here for you to see. Yeah, um, the one that gets sort of suggested and recommended the most is lime, basswood. Have we got a piece there to show everyone, dude? You get a piece. That's the one that is sort of recommended. Um, this one here I'm just showing you, that's the flooring that I mentioned. So that's the only problem we've got with that wood. Bit of oak, oak flooring. So we've got that one there. That's lime, isn't it? No, that's uh, older. Oh, right. It's basically, when it comes to um, carving, our own thoughts is to try different um. woods because there are all sorts of um, different timbers. And what we always say is that different, different woods suit different people. Dad always tells a story. Oh, is that it? When you started years and years ago. Actually, that isn't it either, but um, it's very similar. No. The thing is with the line, that's, that's recommended for beginners. Um, yeah, which if you're in America, you refer to it as basswood. It's also called linden, so it's got a few different names. And um, it, it's, it's recommended because it's easy carving. There's a couple of reasons why we don't recommend it. Uh, one of them is because it lacks a bit of character. So as I'm working here in the oak, the advantage of working in something like the oak is it doesn't matter how terrible a job I do of the carving, the oak has got that beautiful character in it. And hopefully, even if you have an absolute nightmare and get it completely wrong, people's eye and their attention will go to that beautiful grain as opposed to any sort of dreadful mistakes that you've made. But they're not the easiest then woods, not the most straightforward for sort of starting out. I think we've got another question now. I'll carry on answering that one. I've checked. Uh, what's the best wood to stand up? Oh, good morning, Mike. Here we are, good morning, Mike. Glad you can join us. Yeah, um, so the... Uh, yeah, that's the one then that a lot of people say about is the lime, but that you've basically got to try things and see what suits yourselves. Our own sort of suggestions would be to use seasoned hardwoods. That's, that's our own sort of background. They're, they're reliable. They, they do a good job. Um, but Dad always tells the story of when he first started, he had, you had a few ladies in, didn't you? And he explained to them about what wood to use and they mentioned, for example, pine. And he said to them, well, it's not ideal for wood carving. So a year later, they came back with two beautifully carved love spoons with a set of grapes in the bowl of the spoon. And um, they carved them from pine. So the moral of the story is don't tell a woman what to do. Well, the moral of the story is never rule anything in, never rule anything out. Uh, there's, you know, you can, you, you've got to find what suits yourself. If you're looking for suggestions from ourselves, my own advice is when you're learning, try different woods, try different timbers, find out what suits yourself the best. Because my preferred wood when I learned to carve was actually beech which if you speak to most people, they would say, well, you've got to be mad. What would you want to be carving beach learning for? It just suited me. It was more resilient. And for my style of carving, it suited me. You check that there's any other questions for me, please. Any other questions? Good morning, Mike Chopper. Yes, thank you all for joining us. So you can see we're well on with this carving now. The answer to the, you know, is it best softwood or hardwood? The majority for Yeah, by and large, you would say hardwood, wouldn't hardwood, you? Hardwood, yes. But again, it can depend on the job. It's because, and again, that you're doing. it's a technical term, really, because... Some hardwoods are, are soft some, and some yeah. softwoods are hard, so... Yeah, yeah. so some are, are physically harder. Um, our own, hardwoods, our so own sort of basic guideline is, is, is try, try different woods. 
your favourite starting out one they did was teak. Teak, I love the work teak, yeah, it's beautiful work. And um, I, Do you want to show that as well, dear? Because you can see the extent to what we have to do. It, it might be a little tip for anybody. Yeah. We showed, we showed them that. Yeah, right. and now what and we now what we do, see, there, we cut so a piece. Piece of mahogany that we wouldn't use. And so we put that on the on the back of the spoon. So this is for send, just the yeah. sending of spoons. We turn it over because that's, you see, face it that's down. where the spoon now is. So it's going to have a support there. That's right. We're going to put another uh, piece of paper around there. This is all to try, try and next. make it as safe as possible for posting. So we have to go to quite some lengths to try and protect our our spoons to be uh, to be posted. Now then, you may have noticed, if you've been watching what we're doing closely, I've spent quite a bit of art, uh, time working on the eye, but I always think that the eye of um, the animal, the eye of the bird, whatever you're carving, I always think that the eye is quite an important part. Now Thomas the Woodcarver is here, he's putting some tissue paper around I, I, I'm the sure spoon it is as well. I'm sure because, you know, I, I'm doing some work as well, like, you know, and, and Dave, you know... He wants you all to know he that he's, he he's busy. He tends to push me in the back room, like, you know, but see how hard I'm working wrapping this parcel. Yeah. So he's wrapped, he's wrapping this parcel now, and then after that, we box it up and we send it out. Yeah, um, so... It's not finished yet. I think that may have been one of the longest answers that anybody's ever had to a, uh, a simple question. The long and short of it is, is... Um, now you see it. Try what you, try the different Still woods. Still working on it. Try the different woods, find out what suits yourself and, and go from there. So we've nearly finished getting our different layers. What is gonna make a real difference with this carving is when I turn it round in the opposite direction and when I add the little bits of detail to the wing, hopefully this bit here, this ridge, this needs taken out. <coughs> these these legs are gonna have to be, the legs and the claw are gonna have to be pushed back further because of the depth that I've done everything else at. Checklist. Checklist. Box. Love spoon, cards. There you see, picture of Dave. There we are. Picture of my hands. Notice Dave gets the full view. All he sees is my hands. Typical, typical. Gives him something to complain about. Right, we go on to um, turning it round in the vise. And this, now we're just working on that tail. We're just bringing that level of the tail just down a little bit. And then the same, the body. We're just reducing that down. And I got a beverly edge of the wing as well. Just a nice process, as you can see. And it's keeping it sort of as simple as possible, but trying to get the maximum amount of effect from the work that you do. Now this claw, that front claw there, that's too proud at the moment because that would be wrapping around the branch. So we don't want it too high. We don't want that level too high. We want those claws just wrapping around the branch itself. And we mentioned as well, of course, we've got Valentine's coming up. So it's been a, a, a busy sort of time for us and we've had a, a number of bespoke love spoons that we've been uh, working on. We've also had a, a number of online orders and things, but looking at the website, for those of you who are interested in the scroll sawing, you may notice that we do regular videos where we show you how to make different things. One thing that we've had requested a number of times are templates and designs. So what I was doing yesterday, we basically have developed the, the, the page, the scroll sawing page, and you can now find a lot of the projects that we've done a lot of those designs they're now on that scroll sawing page and you can print those off and have a go at making them yourself so hopefully it's all free on there hopefully it's a good resource a good free resource the way you find it is if you go on any of the um i think most of them are five easy scroll saw projects or five scroll saw project videos go on those and have a look in the description. You'll see 
there's a link to our website, but there's also a link to the specific page. And all of the, the templates, you'll find them at the bottom of the page. Let us know if, if they are useful and if any of you have a go. You can always email us, email us a photo and show us how, how the project goes for yourself. And any questions, because if you do have any difficulties or anything, just, just let us know and we're always happy to help out. I'm just going to check again just to see if there's any other, uh, any other questions anybody's got. I think we're well on the way to getting our blue tip card out. Let's have a little look. Good morning. Uh, I run, uh, scroll so much. Okay, I think we've got some other questions there. Eh? Oh, well, um. But um, yeah, we're, we're always looking to sort of develop it and help everybody as much as we can and improve it in different ways. So hopefully add in those Hopefully adding those free resources to the website will the help everyone out. As well, Neil, of course, another side to this, yeah. the, the root is actually in, you can see it in our garden at the moment. Well, that's what I was explaining because, yeah. I'll be honest, I've just, I've changed my camera system. Um, on my old camera system, I had a long lens on, so I, I was doing wildlife photography. I haven't bought a new lens to continue doing that with my new camera, but the, the camera I was using, you were able to get beautiful photos and you could see all the detail and all the individual feathers. And so, because we have them here in the garden then, it, it gives you a real appreciation for all the little bits of detail. And I find that, you know, by photographing and looking at nature and things like that, I definitely feel that it helps in, in my carving. So it's a, it's a good example for how Doing things like YouTube and a website and photography and things like that. It's a good example for how it helps us out in our daily work that we're doing. Right, now I'm getting to the stage. I think I'm going to turn it back round in the vise. I'll tell you what I'll do. Before that, I'm just going to carve the top of the spoon. So you can see we're just beveling around the outside. That comes down to individual sort of preference. That's my style of carving. For instance, Dad, now he, he would look at that and he'd say, why have you gotten as deep as that? But we just got a different style of carving. We have a different way of, of doing things. And that's, as we mentioned again, you just got to find out that approach, find the method that suits you best. So this is the piece at the top. For those of you then who are interested in the carving, in Love Spoon carving more specifically, we're always thinking of practical things. So you need somewhere to be able to hang the love spoon. So that's why we put that little piece, that loop over the top, is you're planning ahead then where somebody can hang it on a wall, nice and easily, and yeah, no problems in terms of displaying the love spoon afterwards. Some of the different things as well we get asked, we were asked recently in terms of, you know, keeping the, how to keep the love spoons, we shellac, as we've mentioned to everybody a few times, we use shellac sand and sanding sealer, three coats of it. So they're, they're basically, they're finished, but we do sort of suggest to people every now and then to oil them, to look after them. And we're always explaining to people, you know, wood is a natural material and to try and keep them away from sources of stress. So for instance, heat and steam yeah. and things like that. Do you want to show that finished packing? It's a wonderful job, Dave. There we are. Okay. There we go. There we are. Wonderful job. Look at that. But there's an important issue here, Dave, because <laughs> this is um, when we that's post our gauge. These, that's our gauge. So it may look trivial, but if you can get it down so, to that, that gauge it probably saves us about two pounds on every parcel. Yeah. It does. So for every love spoon that we make, that gauge. We check it like that, and every now and then we go to the place to send it, and they say, "Oh, that doesn't fit." And we say, "Well, that's right. We've so checked it in the gauge. It does." Any, anybody that's sort of going to make these uh, on a, a larger scale can bear that in mind. When you make your box, make sure that it's the right sort of size. Um, you Take know, in. if you make your cardboard box out the postings off, just make sure that you've got the right size. 
the right for the, thickness. For the, for the right postage. That's right. Because um, it can make a massive difference. From the from a sort of business perspective, yeah, yeah. it can make a real crucial difference between uh, how you're going to get on. Just working out, like, you know, 100 parcels, £2 a piece. £200, you know, pounds, yeah, potentially on. Pounds, uh... <coughs> now, so we turned it back round, and this way round, whilst your cells, it's a little bit more difficult to see it, this is, I can now clearly see our blue tit and how it's coming on. And we're nearly, we're nearly there. We're just dropping the levels down a little bit. One thing we've got to do as well, we've got all of the lines to do on the wing. So you can see I'm angling that gouge away. The reason I'm doing that then is to reduce the chances of um, splitting it, basically. You, at this stage as well, I can remember when I was learning to carve, that you, you were always, it was always a confidence thing, trying to build your confidence up. Now, I, I would sometimes shellac that robin just to see just to, just to have a look it's a blue see. it's a blue tit oh there we are he's calling me it's he's calling tit. me robin a, he's calling me a blue <laughs> tit a robin now well i, I should have said bird <laughs> okay so you, i would shellac it just to see what it looks like um looks more like a robin to me <laughs> he was talking about confidence and then he comes in here with this tirade <laughs> come on make your point yeah, I, I, I would just put a little bit of shellac on just to show everybody um, the, 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 um, the bird at, the, at this point in time. It just brings the character out um, and it shows, because you can't, I don't know whether everybody can see the um, What I will do then. The feathers just, here. I'll, I'll get the shellac in. I was going to say, if you go and grab me, you go and grab me the shellac. There we are. And so everybody can see it better. We get a better idea now. Thomas Woodcarver has gone for the shellac. And we put a coat on so you'll be able to see some of the little bits of detail. What I'm going to do to sort of finish it off is to um, sand it. So I'm going to sand it around with quite a fine sandpaper. I got a piece just by the side of me. That was more luck than judgment. So what we're going to do is just sand it around because the, the blue tit is it's like a quite a rounded shape. And so just by sanding it all off like so. There's a shellac. There we are. Do you want to put a bit of shellac on the budget we got? No comment. He's called it a budgie. He's called it a robin. There we are. He's called me worse. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let's just do a little bit more. Where we've, where we've just sanded it, it's just changed the shape a little bit of the, uh, the beak. And what everybody will be impressed with is this brush. It, it's quite something. It is. It's. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I think that's coming on. Yeah. I think that's coming on nicely. I tell you what, I will do. So I stopped him in his track. So he's just oh, about to put some. Quite excited then. He's going to put some shellac. What it is, I don't want. Whilst I want that wing above the body, I don't want too much of a, a separation. Do you, do you understand? Do you, you understand what I'm getting at with yeah, that? Yeah. Hope everyone understands. I don't want, you know, we. you're thinking about what that bird actually looks like. And whilst we're working in different layers, we don't want them sort of too separate. Otherwise, it just doesn't look realistic. Let's do a little bit of... I, 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 I put the shellac on, do I? Go on, you, you go for it. We're going to swap over. I'm going to check if anybody else has asked any other questions. Let's have a little look. Somebody asking about what price is it for scroll saws? Oh, it definitely looks like a chaff inch. Um, depends on, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. With the prices of scroll saws, it, it varies massively. Um, there we are. That's just, just to bring up the so feathers on the, what was it, chaff inch, was it? So, yeah, we're, we're, in, the, we're in the UK. He's got, he's got shellac now on the, on the carving block. So we're in the UK, when it comes to scroll saw prices, um, somebody was contacting me last week about this. You can get scroll saws that are under a hundred pounds. Now you're asking the wrong person in terms of their performance because I've never used one because we use a Hegna Multicut 2S. 
I think the last time of checking, I think they're between eight hundred and a thousand pounds. Am I right in? I mean, around oh, about. I think they're a bit less than that. I, I would have thought six, nearer six hundred. Right, you, you, perhaps you, perhaps you, you, you yeah. perhaps others, others will know. So, so be, um, but I, I got, I got a feeling that they, you're definitely looking north of five hundred. Yeah. I think you are yeah. north of five hundred. But the Hegner scroll saws, they are fantastic. Yeah. And, and the important thing with the Heg with the, the scroll saw, Dave, is that you have a good base. Yeah, you want to have whatever with scroll saw you, 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 you use, you want to basically have it bolted to the floor. So a lot of our demonstrations, you will see a little bit of movement in, in our scroll saw. And the reason for that is the one that we do a lot of our demonstration, we move it about to get it in the right position for the camera. Um, which is not ideal, but it's it's to serve the purpose. Otherwise, our main scroll saw, our main Hegner scroll saw, is fixed to the floor, and it's more difficult for us to get the correct angle for filming. Uh, as I said, there are scroll saws for a hundred pounds and things like that. Whilst I say I've I've never used them, so I'm the wrong person to ask. We have in the past had some of the cheaper scroll saws. And we had a number of problems with them. Yeah, and most of them with them. as well. It's maximum of, of, of about half, five eighths of an inch thick, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's not very half thick. half an inch to an inch thick yeah, is what we're working in. Somebody asking about cutting two inch timber. Two inch timber. That's, so that's that's a different thing again, and it's a different. Can I slow you up there, Dave? Because blade. You're, you're carving that quite quickly there now. But could you explain? where the lines are on that heart. Yeah, so because what... that's a point where you could easily get it wrong. Yeah, so what we're doing, see, is we're creating the effect of the entwined hearts where they go over and under. So this is a style of heart that we use on our bespoke spoons, and we use quite a lot. And we're just marking it out to create that effect. So this heart here on the... this one on the, the left, as I'm looking, that one there, at the top, it goes under, but on the bottom, it goes over. Yeah. Now, the reason that we do it in this way is if you do it where these ones here are going under and then do it the reverse, well, what ends up happening is the one heart is dominating the other one. But what we want is the hearts to be side by side, and we want the hearts to be very much um, together. Going back as well to the scroll saw pricing, you can basically spend what you want on a scroll oh, yeah, saw. Yeah. And, and there are, because there are machines going up into the thousands, and as I said, they're starting at less than a hundred. One thing, you could have the most brilliant scroll saw machine that is available. If your blade is useless, it ultimately, you know, it, it's it's the same. I can only give the comparison. We've, I've spoken a little bit about the photography. You can have a wonderful camera and a terrible lens and you'll suffer the consequences. So with, with your scroll saws, if you're getting into it, I, I would consider if you're not 100% sure that you're going to be doing it regularly, I would definitely consider one of the more reasonably priced machines but find out what blades are available for it. So for instance, we always recommend the Nikwa number nine reverse tooth blade. Um, I, I would be happier working with that particular blade on a more reasonably priced scroll saw than working on a fantastically anyway, I was priced uh, scroll saw with a useless blade. Here in US, 100 to $400 Depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it, it's 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 one of those things where, yeah, the, the, the sort of pricing with it, you know, it is to a degree you get you get what you pay for. Yeah. But the blades, and we've got a video coming up about blades and our own thoughts on blades. And be honest, with you, I reckon that's going to be quite controversial to a degree because everybody, you know, whatever blade you're using, that's the best for yourself. You know, you 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 know what suits you best. Yeah. But we've just given our own thoughts and our own opinions on the blades. The other thing as well, uh, off, that, off the subject slightly, is, is that you're carving that now. Yeah. You know, you're, you're gonna go right through the carving. When I started to carve, first of all, again, about confidence, 
I would have three or four carvings, similar ones, um, to, to, you know, to be working on. I would do a little bit on that spoon, and then I would look at something, a, a, another type of carving, maybe a house sign or something like that. Yeah, I, um, I when I when I was learning to carve as well myself, I find I found that you would get you get too intense and caught up, and if something went slightly wrong in your carving, like at the start of this, where I laid, made a little mistake, yeah, that, would, that would that would throw that would yeah. throw me when I first did, and I and I'd start letting that bother me, and I would have to do the same, where I go away from the job and come back to it. Now it's yeah. second nature yeah. to us, but you you get to that stage as as you're going along. But yeah, definitely when you're learning. If something, if when you're carving you have an issue or something causes you a problem or you're worrying about a particular thing, what dad is saying is if you go away from it and then come back, it can certainly um, help you out. On that yeah. note, are you going to interrupt this is a, the a, live stream to show everybody? An opportune moment yeah. to show you. There we are. This is uh, what they used to call a blue Peter job. Here we um, are. So what what it's, dad's it's one I prepared earlier. Well, what we're gonna do then, I'll go and I'll 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 have two seconds and dad will come in and you're gonna demonstrate and explain to everybody. Get your get Are we still there? We might be, I hope so. Get get your questions in. Um because we're gonna we're gonna swap swap over two minutes. Get your questions in if you've got them. While we swap over, and if you explain there we are. what you um, did. Again, using recycled, this is recycled oak, and if you notice, um, there are two spoons here, very similar. Am I, am I showing them on, are they coming on the screen okay, Dave? Yeah, they should be fine. Yeah, so of course, um, why two spoons? Well, when we marked this one out, um, I think it was yesterday, um, Mark it all out, we cut, we rubbed into the spoon part, and as we worked it, of course, inside, there were two little marks. That one there, and another one there. And there was something in the grain. Um, you can actually see it on the end of the timber. Um, you sometimes get that. Um, we, you, we did explain with that one there. Yes, you explained them that, yeah. Yeah. We did explain it earlier. Oh, you did. I thought you were going to show them this. Oh, right. It's completely thrown me out. Oh, there we are. Look, it's the old man. Okay, I am getting past it a little bit. So um, apparently, we've explained that one. This is typical. This is the um, right. This is the mind going uh, backwards a little bit. We're cross purposes to one another. There we are. Because what I thought you were going to demonstrate, you demonstrated something I've already done. Oh, there we are then. Okay. Right. This is what I wanted to ah, do. I won you when you were doing that, perhaps. Okay. No, you missed that bit. Sorry about that. There we are. So, this one now then, um, we've, obviously we've, we've, um, drawn it out. We've drawn it all out. And, um, where's my pencil there? That's it. Oh, you got the pencil marks. What we do to, um, Mark. transfer now that, um, drawing onto the wood we then get our glue and the brush there we go is that showing up there yeah that's showing up so basically this is the method that we use we use a couple of different methods for sticking on the, the, the design. Um, and so we, in more recent times, have stuck to actually sticking it on using glue. So we put that glue on the design itself. And yeah, that's it. So we put that glue on the design itself and we use that then to stick it on. And it just means that we've got those guidelines to follow. But we then put just the water. Yes, yeah, so we wet the woods. So it's a method, all we do, we're demonstrating a method that you might want to use to stick down your designs. So this is a, a bit of a water, watery glue as well. That's right, so that is so a method that we on use there. For, for sticking it down. And if you notice, I've got pencil marks, one, two, three, 
four. Quick, a quick question has come in as well. Um, do we look for tight grain with our spoons? Yeah. It's basically close grain wood, isn't it? It's, yeah, we do. Um, yeah, we. You know, it, it, it's. It's it, those those timbers are more suitable for the work that we're doing. They're more suitable for the carving in in general. So, for instance, yeah, we use a, a wide variety of mahoganies, oak, ash, sycamore, um, fruit woods, apple, cherry, pear, plum, that sort of thing. Yew, juniper, laburnum, all sorts of different woods, walnuts, whatever we can get hold of. And at different times, we get given stuff by the tree surgeon, uh, different timber stores as well, all sorts of, of different things. There you go, see? So that now, that'll be stuck down. I think it needs a little bit of sticking on the top. That's it. There we are. So that design, we'll leave that one now. And as you can see, we've glued it down. We'll leave it overnight. And we've been working on that one then this week. Cutting what we can do, oh, a little bit, ready to, just a little bit carve. there. Notice how it's, it's, it's just puckered up a little bit. Get that back down. Any other questions as well? Get them into oh, us. Yeah. We can put that by the fireplace now, Dave. Not too close, sir. No, not uh, on the fire. Is that but, something uh, that we're always explaining to people? Because people ask us about the uh, where to put their spoons, and it's amazing how people put them under the stress of heat or steam or. Here in we the are. Sun. So that's that's ready now to um, to dry off. To dry off. There we go. So that's just a little break just to show everybody how we go about um, actually sticking the designs on. We still also use carbon paper and we still use templates as well, but there's no rules, rules or regs. And that's what we try to do is to demonstrate different methods and techniques that might be useful to you. So what we're going to go on to here now, we're just going to carry on working on these hearts. So we're just going to work on that bottom shape. So we're basically getting the right angles for, for the uh, rows. So when I'm working on these, the, this stop cut for the bottom of the heart, I'm more conscious of the angle of the rows than I am of the heart itself. So we're just carving in the one direction like so, and then in the other one. And it just gives us a nice shape then for, uh, gives us a nice shape for our rose petal. So just around the outside of the heart as well, and the nice thing so far with this is it's been a really nice piece of oak to carve in. The medieval carvers, they used to use a lot of oak. In the UK here, yeah, you'll see a lot of, lot of church carvings, isn't it? They, yeah. would, they, would use the, uh, they would use oak for. One of my own personal favorites for, for working in, but a lot of people shy away from it, don't they? Because it's, it's got, similar with the teak, it has a reputation for not being the easiest of woods. So you can see we're just working with that grain, just like so, and then same the other side, carving down like so. We get that outside shape. And today with everything that's happened in the world, this is what we find ourselves doing more and more of. So in years gone by, we were giving more talks and demonstrations to visitors to coach groups that sort of thing but today then we we find ourselves doing more um more bespoke love spoons more original designs but it's great we have people send in their own designs we get all sorts of different ideas as well that people send to us and it's nice to be able to share the tradition you mentioned all. i mentioned that one as well <laughs> everything what it is is that I've I've uh, I've mentioned Thomas Woodcarver's just come over with a bit of that flooring. Yeah, we mentioned that one with the with the grooves, with the grooves in it. Now I'm going to demonstrate as well in this. If anyone's looking for a, a simple little gift item for well, Valentine's I you, Day, I bet you didn't mention this then. What's that? Eh? I, I I probably didn't. So what? He's oh. he's he's found something that he can. Uh, I found something that he hasn't mentioned. I've been there stealing everything. So what timber is that? Oh, there we are. We put it, I'll put it down there. Have a look at that two minutes. What wood is that? There we go. Hopefully that's long enough. Get it in the comments section. What wood do you think that one is? We'll answer at the end of the video. 
You know what it is, Dave. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I know what I think it is. Put it that way. I know what I think it looks like. Be interested now. Let's see. I know what it is because I know where it came from. Right. It had. It, it it's had two lives. Yeah. So it's it's been in two different places. Okay. And now it's going to have a third life because we are eventually will make a love spoon from it. So. Uh, so there we are. Get it in the comment section. What timber wood? Is fascinating. Let us know if you want another look at it. Yeah, timber. So fascinating. Three different lives. Are Piece One piece of wood that's well, had. Four because of course it, it, well, its first life itself, would be as a tree. Yeah, the tree itself it was chopped down and then it was put in one position. And, um, oh dear me, it's a wonderful story. Can I tell them a little bit about the story? Yeah, tell them. Without saying what timber it is? Yeah. Okay, well, um, we got it from our local church. When you come around here, so you can hear in the microphone better. Oh, right you are then. That's it. Okey dokey. Yeah, so that particular piece of timber that I showed everybody, we got it from our local church um, yes, that would about three or four place. years ago, I think it was. You got a question? No, you carry on. Okay. Tommy, Tommy thinks it's walnut. No, not a bit of walnut. Well, it's ever so similar. Give him a yes. clue. Think of the age. Well, I tell, I tell you, I tell you, know that if you'll, you, you'll get a clue by the story itself. Um, it's probably between three and four hundred years old. Good question. Um, Good question has come in as well. So you yeah. carry on, Alex. I'll answer. So I'll answer that question now. The the first uh, the the local church was being um, renovated. And um, this particular piece came from a lintel above one of the windows. And um, so there's a few clues gone in there. Yeah, it came so out of a church, three we, or four hundred years old. Yeah. The, so the, what wood is it? The, the lintel was renewed, but of course we had that timber then. Um, this this piece of uh, timber, and I looked at it, and there were certain holes in it. And I realized that it had been part of the roof before it was used as a lintel. So <coughs> this meant that the, <coughs> excuse me, the timber was obviously going back, as I say, three to four hundred years old. We've got, we've got two questions here. One is, do termites, do termites eat seasoned wood? Well, one thing I... We don't, West Wales, <coughs> well, we don't actually get termites, we don't get termites, do the only thing you get, woodworm, get, woodworm yeah. is the only thing that you'll get. <coughs> and we get the, 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 the sort of common, um, I don't know, we quite get the common woodworm we get. Yeah. It's quite a small fly. Yeah, and. Uh, about a sixteenth of an inch and the, it makes. The wonders <coughs> of the modern, modern world, you've got, you've got, um, uh, Baratine and uh, yeah. Cuprinol, different wood preservers. <coughs> um, I'm sure other other names are available as well. So there's different wood preservers. If you're dubious about a piece of wood, you know you can treat it. Or if you really, if you think there's live worm in it, then shot it on the fire, get shot of it. So um, we're back to that piece of timber. the the other question. Sorry to sort of come back. Was um, what do we do if something goes, you know, radically wrong? What happen? What, what if if we completely chop a leg off or something like that? What do we do? Basically, if you make a real mistake like that, which is bound to happen, well, it was, and especially we showed, it, we showed it with a bowl and a spoon, didn't we? Yeah, and especially yeah. where if yeah, something goes again. if something goes badly wrong. Well, no, you don't. In that case, you don't automatically have to completely abandon it and start again. At the start, I cut too much off the leg, and what I did in reaction to that, I carved the whole thing deeper into the wood. So if you cut something, like you meant, the, the question mentioned like the beak and things like that. If you completely chop it off, yeah. excuse me, and you've left no wood at all, yeah, you're in trouble. You either got to glue it back on and try and ignore the fact that you've done it, but basically, you're, you're in the realms, you've got to start again. That's what I would do. Unless you're going to glue it on, that is what I, w I wouldn't, I yeah, would start if it, again. If it was for yourself. But, if it's for yourself, yeah. But because we're doing it for sale, we wouldn't do that. But in terms of what you mentioned, you know, if you chop a leg or something like that. Well, basically, what I would do, 
like the mistake that I made, I carved the whole bird deeper into the wood. So the demonstration that you saw, you saw me carving it deeper into the wood because of that initial mistake um, that I made. Do you wanna do you wanna demonstrate a few different different ones? Have a look, see if anyone's got the wood now. I'll have a look, see if anybody's I reckon I reckon somebody like Tommy will have had it from the, the clues. No, Jennifer Hoxie thought it might be you. No. Nope. Do you wanna show it again? Clue, show it again. The clue is in the fact that it was from a church. Yeah. Do you want to show the piece of wood again? Three or four hundred years old. Take another look. Where's it gone? I you I you took it? it back over there, I think. Um. Well, so we've been we've been talking as well as you as you may have noticed or not. Uh, we've moved on to the rose, and this is a carving that we started doing more and more of. Well, come on, Dave. What do you do with that bit of wood? He's now lost the piece of wood, so the wood that we're talking about, he's got no idea where he's put it. You only had it two minutes ago. This is the level of organisation, see? It's a very big workshop here. You've only, you've only walked two metres, isn't that it, on top of there? This is, this is wood carving in the style of uh, Laurel and Hardy, no? We've lost our bit of wood. I am not it. So as you can see for doing our rows then, we start working on our stop cuts. So we're doing those stop cuts around the, uh, where our petals will be, just like so. I'm pretty sure it's that piece of wood over there. That's what I keep looking at. What piece you looking so we're, we're doing our stop this cuts. Ah, oh, take your point. For building up then the layers of our petals. And what we want to try and create with the rows is that effect of the layers sort of folding one behind the other. So we're working in different layers, but what I will do, I'll carve it in a style where they all sort of fold, fold over sort of one another. Well, there we are. Today's live stream highlights is Thomas the Woodcarver showed you a piece of wood, which we've now, two minutes later, managed to lose in a distance of about three meters squared. Well, I didn't go anywhere, did you? No, I know. So, these are the things that we're, we're dealing with. Between us, we've had a piece of wood. Has anybody else got it yet? Some of the woods you mentioned as well there, though, the yew and the walnut, they're both timbers that, that we do use. Can anybody see where this piece of wood, anybody watching on camera, could you see where this piece of wood has disappeared? At the end of this, we're going to have to do a treasure oh, hunt. look at that, Dave. Look at that. Look. Yay, Thomas the Woodcarver has found this piece of wood again. We're going to have to do a treasure hunt then. It was going to take... Me, we've got pews in the workshop. Um... So show everybody again. Has anybody got the answer, first of all? Has anybody got the answer? No, we're still on the U. That was the last suggestion. Okie dokie. So, so take another there's, look. There's the timber. That's one end. I turn it round. It's the other side. There we are. Yeah, look at that. That came, that had two previous lives. Uh, Apart from the tree. Well, it's interesting, the story behind it as well, isn't it? That they, when we, when we had that wood, that that you know that there, was sort of there may be easier to tell on, that, the, on the end green there that 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 was that unwanted bit. that was unwanted wood that was sort of given to us yeah. and um, very interesting that they were explaining well, I can't remember who it. explained I could, can't remember who explained but they were explaining that back then the wood would have been more expensive than the labour yeah so that is why the wood was reused for a second job is that the labour would have been cheaper than the wood itself. So any good wood that had had a, a previous existence. Well, I think we've stumped everybody on that timber. There we are. Well, the clue... What would have been the popular timber in church building years ago? Think churches and 400 years ago. And the clue is, is think of the wood, how it ages. What does wood do when it ages? There we go. Have we lost the sound here on there? I love Spoon Thomas, say something. Have we lost the sound? Hang on, I'm now. Let's see. Have we lost sound? 
Then we lost uh, Simon. Did we lose Simon? Simon? Did we sack them? No, we lost Simon. Okay. No, we're fine for Simon. Yeah, so, uh, sorry about that. Thomas would have just worried for a second. Hopefully you didn't get any feedback when we did that, just to check the sound, that's all. Because our sound is always muted, this end, so we don't this, have this terrible feedback This would be a famous here. timber in England, of course. Even though we're in Wales. We haven't mentioned the rugby yet. No, I don't mention it. No. No, I don't mention the rugby yet. No, we don't. We, it, 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 a, 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 as some people would say, a win's a win, no? Uh, but, uh wasn't the finest, but, no. but there we are. It moves, it, it rolls on. So we got, you can see we're just building up the layers now, just getting the petals, just trying to get those just to flow one behind the other. And we will shape them, we'll bevel the edge back the other way as well, trying to Trying to create that sort of effect of layers and levels going behind one another. Before you answer the question, have I got something else here? There we are. So we're just building that up using using that direction of the grain. So we've got that spoon has been marked out with a vertical grain. So we're we're just yeah, working down, get that depth into the woods like so same on this petal and we build up those layers and we are well on our way could you show that piece here yeah thomas woodcarver keeps producing pieces of wood lemon egg this is the if you push it right forward so they can see these scoop marks right okay this was the lintel that i referred to all right and on the other end you can see there's a fair bit of woodworm in yeah that one. And as we turn it round, Dave. Yeah. You can see. Ah, there we are. That was the timber that we were just yes, got to get. Yeah. Okay. You got that hole and everything there. There we are. Okay. So we did have two other lives. Ah, Sim. Have we got any suggestions yet? What timber it is? It's extremely heavy. Andy Rent. Oh, we we. Oh, hey, Tommy's workshop. Told you you get it. We got it, Tommy. It's oak. It is indeed. It's oak. But it shows you, it's a good example for showing you how the wood darkens and how it changes with age. Yeah. Because we get a lot of people asking us, um, you know, we're, when, we, when we're doing spoons for them, they say, oh, I want oak, but I want light yeah. oak. But as soon as you've made that spoon in oak, it's going to start darkening. And, yeah. and over time, it will darken. And that is, it's just a natural thing. It doesn't matter what wood it is. Uh, they all darken. And it's a shame for us because we can't actually use that timber and sell it as, as yeah. We don't shop. use it for our online shop. Uh, the only thing we could do, we we do the collector's corner stuff. Yeah, so we, we could we could corner, we can we put it. Use it. We can't use it as oak in our online yeah. shop because it's people so dark. people would say, oh, that's not oak. That's too dark. But it is oak. And it, it, it's just an interesting example showing how the wood changes and how it matures and how it how it ages. Um, but for instance, I mean, there's there's the first spoon that you did. That one there is the first spoon that Dad did, and that's a piece of teak. But you can see how it darkens. You know, when it was first carved, much lighter. Um, much you know, lighter. Look at those marks. That's interesting. Too. That would be. What were the, yeah? What are the marks on the back of it? No, I don't know that. Uh, for the grip. For the old lath and plaster. Right. So there we are. Shall I just push that so they can see the, how they would have been gripped? Yeah. Yeah. So if you just want to. There you go. It was a lintel. So that would have been these score marks, you see? That's where they. So they um, would use the old, um, what do yeah. you call lath and plaster? Yeah. Lime mortar. So that's how they'd get a grip on it and get it to stick to it was by uh, doing. That just like so. So as you can see, we're well on the way to completing now our rows, and we're well on the way to completing the love spoon in its entirety too. Um, hopefully, seeing the process is useful. Hopefully, it'll give you a few ideas for anyone who's interested with love spoons. Hopefully, it gives that idea that there are no rules or regulations. 
get asked a lot of questions about symbols and meanings of symbols. Basically, it's a tradition that's very open-ended and that's why, that's why we enjoy it, but that's why we also recommend it for anyone who's learning wood carving. We've got a question here, Dave. Yeah. Um, it's, what if rain falls on seasoned wood? Will it, I guess, be ruined? That's what they're saying. Right. Now, this is an interesting one, isn't it? Because initially with wood, one of the main things to get the wood, when it comes to seasoning the wood, one of the main things to get it out of initially is the sun. That's the most damaging um, in terms of, because the sun, it's so aggressive when it comes to seasoning wood that, that it, it will really pull the, um, the moisture and it will dry it too intensely and pull that moisture out too quickly. So that, I would say, is more important. Yeah. Initially, they do even say, don't they, to leave it out, to let the bark rot, basically it, yeah. rot off it to a degree, our, don't they? Our local um, tree well, surgeon, he, he is it? Castle, uh, yeah. Uh, in Castle Estate. Uh, they would leave it. That would have been the Lord of the Manor which is not far from us, about four or five miles. And they... They um, would cut it and then leave it for the bark to come. They would cut an oak tree and just leave where it left, where it fell. Yeah. They would leave it for at least 12 months. Yeah. And the bark, the outside would, would sort of... Um, rot, rot peel off. Peel away. It, yeah. And uh, then maybe after 12 months, two years, so, they, they bring it in. And, uh, but, uh, but our own thoughts, if you get water on it for too long, you get what they call spalting. Yeah. And then you get things like the fungus, you know, the spalting effect on it. Um, ideally, what you want to do is to get it in under cover with a good airflow running around it. And... Um, the only timber you'd, you'd use outside would be cedar. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, for shingles, that kind of thing. That's right. Uh, um, you, but you, you wouldn't want to leave timber outside. Not unless you want that effect yeah. of the spalted, you know, the, which is, is popular. Um, but that's what I would do, is to get it in. Um, but it's not, it's not a case of, oh, we've got some wood here and it's rained on the wood. That's it, throw it out. No, it doesn't work like that. It, it, it's, it depends. Depends how long, how yeah. much. Yeah and in the type of wood, the stage it is for seasoning. Yeah. I mean, we're working, we, when we cut our own timber, we cut it down, as I said, get it out of the sun. We will bring it in, but we don't bring it into somewhere that's got sort of central heating or something like that. We get it under cover and in a, a, a sort of timber store where there's a good airflow, and that then is the, the sort of best process for doing it. We cut it less than an inch thick, dry it for a 12 month, and um, it's after, sorry, explained that incorrectly. We dry it out for a 12 month in log form. We then cut it after 12 months to less than an inch thick, put it on little slats, store it for another 12 months, and it's ready to go. Because the simple principle we work from is for every inch across the diameter, it takes a 12 month to dry out the woods. The nice thing with what we do though, as we've said, we're what they define as an eco business now because we can recycle and reclaim a lot of the wood that we use, which means, um, it's already seasoned. We it's nice it's ready to go. In, I think we may have mentioned it. A uh, chap brought us a piece of timber in back in the summer. Yeah. And um, asked us, well, he'd, he'd got it from a place in Tenby where he lived. That's and right. And he asked us if we could make a spoon for, from that particular wood because it meant something to him. And. Uh, Wasn't it from his house almost? It was from the Five Arches Tenby. Ah, there we are. Yeah, he and he was from there. Tenby, and it, it was, yeah. I think he had it as a present for his, his wife, I yeah. think, wasn't it? So, I think it could have been for St. And that's, that's, that's what we do see, is um, the woods can tell part of the story yeah. of your love spoon. Yeah. So, for instance, this is oak, and oak, you often hear it referred to as golden oak, 
So for wedding anniversaries or for 50th birthdays, it's sometimes selected specifically because people want to make reference to it. Yeah. We've made, over the years, we've made for silver wedding anniversaries, we've made love spoons from silver birch. So you can use your love spoon for telling the story. Somebody mentioned you. Yeah. You is also referred to. Some say it's unlucky to bring you inside. If that's the case, we're very unlucky because we've got loads of it inside. But the you tree is referred to as the eternal tree. So again, it tells, it tells part of part of a story. There we go. So you can see now we're we're just working on beveling around the edges. We're gonna do we're gonna do a twist on the stem with this love spoon as well. And you're gonna do a twist or a jive? I think we stick to the twist. You were okay. you were always very good at the twist. You were, that was always your forte, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I, I didn't quite have the flexibility for it. There we go. So, we'll just work into there. And again, I think we're just gonna, what I do, I just pick it up in the vise a little bit. Just take the shape. I'm just beveling that edge again. And afterwards, where I'm doing things like that, beveling the edge, we will just, um, sand it all down so we get a nice smooth finish again no rules or regs you can finish it however you feel best so turn it round the other way and we just shape it again now one thing i'm going to do because we're getting nearer to the end here now i'm going to take a little bit out of there because i just caught it with the gouge and it's that sort of mark that we showed you earlier on that other spoon I see the difficulty here though. I mean, I'm going to put this one back in because that's that's how we started, bearing in mind. Yeah, so you can see that's okay. that's what we're starting with. Yeah. And but, that's where we've got to now. But you can see the difficulty when it comes to pricing for a job. You know, this is the second time. This is that's the second right. attempt. So technically, all the time that was spent on that one. Yeah. You know. So um, what we've got to the different stages. This is the hand carving part of the process. You've got the cutting, you've got the selecting of the timber, you've got the processing of the wood, you've got the designing, and that is one of the most tricky and sort of skilled parts of the process, because any problems, any problems you've got in your design, you're gonna be paying for those right through the process. So that is one of the most difficult parts of um, getting the process right. It's right, isn't it? Because if you make a mistake in your design, yeah. Yeah. That's that's going to be, yeah. you're going to be living with that mistake right the way through the process of whatever whatever you're making. So yeah. designing. For instance, you, you could leave the tail off the um, unicorn. You could do the horse, that was a horse. Oh, it was a horse, was it? Yeah, oh. designed a horse without a tail. <laughs> that's amazing how you always remember any mistakes I've made. I've got to give you that, fair play. <laughs> so we're just working on that twist. That's just the top part of it. And then again, the symbols, they've got different meanings. So, we got that rose, you hope love will blossom, will continue to, to, to blossom. And again, these are open to in interpretation. You don't have to have a, a sort of set idea. You can interpret symbols in, in different ways yourself. And that's what happens with the love spoon. Symbols are given meanings, and then everybody thinks that that's the only meaning that you can give for a symbol. It's just not the case. It doesn't have to be like that. The twist then on the stem represents binding, growing together. As, you, as well, you've got those entwined hearts. So again, representing that sort of togetherness. And the bowl, again, open to interpretation. But one thing we've always felt with the bowl, it's that mixing and blending, bringing things together again. It's always interesting because whenever I'm carving these, I'm always thinking, what occasion and things, what occasion is this for? I think this one is for an anniversary, I think. Mm. Most of the spoons we've been doing more recently have been for anniversaries because of course with lockdown, 
and with the circumstance everywhere, a lot of weddings, unfortunately, have been have been cancelled and postponed and things like that. So we haven't had so much for the, for the interest. More, for, the, for the person who hasn't got the same sort of strength as you, Dave, um, could you just point out that you, you know, if it was me, I would be using a mallet there now, all right? Yeah, so you've got that yeah. one there. Dad would be using the mallet just for a little bit of extra pressure. But there's no no rule or reg, no right or wrong. It's it's whatever whatever suits you, whatever suits you the best. Have we got any any other questions there? No, we're okay. We're clear on that. Now at the end of this, I am going to demonstrate as well, just very quickly. If anyone's stuck and they haven't got a Valentine's present, I'll demonstrate something very quickly that you could consider making, just as a a, a little finish off. I've got a little bit of mahogany here. It's something we've demonstrated before, but uh, you never know, it might save somebody. I know Thomas the woodcarver, he's, he's always organized. He's always the best for sorting out presents, isn't you? Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to know what this uh, no, revelation again. is. Because it might help me. It might, it might help you. Yeah. Yes, he's well known for his wonderful presence. The Love Spoon Carver. What would you say was your, your best ever present? My best ever present? I think a dustpan and brush. That oh, was... I think a dustpan and brush. I think every woman should have one. Every man should have a dustpan and brush. It's that was one of your best ever yeah, present yeah. efforts. Can anybody top that? There we are. We get that in the comments section. I don't think anybody would ever top that. Who on earth would buy a present of a dustpan and brush? But there we are. Oh, come on, though. There was a better one than that. Did you buy it? I can't. Our friend up the road bought an ironing board for somebody. An ironing board? Yeah. Oh, that's... Uh, yeah, that I takes some beating. Was, I think he made the, the ironing board. Oh, dear. I think, I'm, I'm trying to work out... I think I can work out... I think I can work out who that probably was. So you got to that stage there, and the last little bit, just to finish off on the twist. And it's a cold day, but we're at the stage where I'm nice and warm now, see? So all this pushing, it does have an advantage. And once we finish this one, it would go back in next door. We would put it on the belt sander, just to sand off the any paper that we've got left in the design. So I tried to carve off as much as possible, but down here we've still got a little bit left. Uh, it then comes back out, we do some hand sanding. I also carved the back. So what you refer to did is the aris, isn't it? Yeah, the aris. Which I, I tried to find in the dictionary and it was giving me all metal working terms, but anyway. Um, it's just a sharp. Yeah, so just taking off yeah. the sharp intersection of two points or something was what they were, the dictionary yeah. was giving me. Um, so we just turn it round and we take that sharp edge off the back where we've worked on the scroll saw. That's my job, isn't it? Yeah, you can have a look at that one if you want to. Taking the sharp bits off. There we are, and then that last little bit on the twist there. Yeah, and then after we've taken that sharp edge off, it's in next door and it's three coats of shellac sanding sealer. There we are, I Some think. Put two coats of shellac. And then oil it. Uh, beeswax. Uh, or beeswax, yeah, another way. Yeah, uh, beeswax, uh, linseed, There we are. Like that. That's our, that's our progress on that spoon there. Okay, we'll just put a bit of shellac just to bring it out a bit there, what do you think? Yeah, you put it, if, what we do, Thomas the Woodcarver is going to put a coat, a coat of shellac and I'm going to demonstrate, I've demonstrated it before, but for any of you who may or may not have a Valentine's present ready, if you haven't, here's a simple one. And the one for all of you who are starting out, for those who are getting into wood carving and are really at that beginner's stage, this is the first one that I learned how to carve and what I've always taught others. So, you start off, 
you mark out your center, so you angle it like that, and then you angle it over, because we don't want to cut out where we're carving. Three taps on the top, just like so. Same again, measure it out, angle it over, three taps on the top. That's our center. You then got measure it out, angle it over, couple of taps on the other side, angle it over, measure it out, couple of little taps. And this was the first carving, and this is how I very much started. So measure it out, angle it over, couple of taps. Same again on the other side, match it up. These are all of our stop cuts. Yeah, this is how I started with my own sort of wood carving um, experience and development. I used to use scraps of wood, make little key rings, and then carve a little flower on them. So using those stop cuts, cut into the edge, pull back, cut into the edge, pull back, cut into the edge, pull back. There's a little bit left over. Same again, cutting in, pull back like so and do the internal cut into that center. And basically, yeah, I carved my first one of these and sold it, carved another one, sold that one. So I thought, right, I'll carve 10, because perhaps that's a fluke, and sold those. And then from there, built up the confidence, built up the skills and developed the wood carving from there. But this perfect, perfect one to have a go at if you're new to wood carving and you're looking to learn. So it's same again into the middle. These last two petals, we're going slightly across the grain, but there's nothing you can do about that. That's just the direction that they're going in. Good sharp gouge will do the job. We just bevel that. And then what we do, we drill a hole. We drill a hole in the top and we put a little clip on it. And Thomas the woodcarver has got his Valentine's present sorted out because we put, we've turned this into no, I've a got little, mine in my hand. Uh, we've turned it into a little key ring. I got mine in my hand already. Oh, he's already. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's already. I'm going to show you now how. There we are. How much more romantic I am, you see. Oh, you, than you. I really really, He's going to upstage me now. Yeah, why I? There we go. I mean, that's okay, but come on, look. This is a heart shape. Look at that. Oh dear me, Dave. Are Come you on. Demonstrate some carving for everyone now. Yeah, what should we put on you? A little daffodil, is it? There we go. A little the daffodil. Tails. The daffodils are starting. They're starting to come out, the daffodils. They're not out yet, but uh, there there's a few. There are some out. A little daffodil. The first thing you'd be, you'd be, you'd be thinking which, which gouge is. That's the first thing. Yeah, he puts them all over the place, he does. Are you going to explain now what you're doing? Explain to anyone for. Okay. Anyone who wants to learn. A nice little tapper there. Including myself, because you always do it, in fairness, you always do a better daffodil than me. There we go. That's the start. So what have you carved that so far? There. What, what, what part of the daffodil are you working on? Uh, what is it? The, oh, this is the trumpet part. The trumpets. Oh, come on, Dave. What have we done with all these chisels? They're all in different places, man. They're in the same place they've been for the last 10 years. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> There we are, that's the front bit. That's the front bit. Oh, yucky da. Oh, Jennifer yeah. said, thank you for doing the live stream. Now you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. A little bit more around yeah, there. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have you all here. Great to be able to share what we do. Oh, come on, Dave. Where's these Which blinking chisels? For? I, I want the old one that I always used to use. This one? No, the, the with that colour handle, look. Come on. Here we go. This is a this is a fine demonstration. Oh, here, heck. I don't know. It's the, it's the short one. That, that, that one. No, it's not that one, man. That one. You put them in. Ah, oh, there we are. That's the boy. Where does that one go, Dave? Back there. No, no, no. You're you're mixing them up, you are. Oh dear me. See, it's so much easier with the mallet. Ah, oh, look at that. A real smooth show you with the. Thomas Woodcarver doing a daffodil. Quantum mirror, quantum mirror. We just lost the sound. Normally, we'd open the sound.
sound is on and now you've started singing everything the only goes on there we go ah that's the first part a little bit wrong wrong but there now look and a little bit more I'm trying to think as well, have we missed anything? Uh, I think we've pretty much covered everything we were going to do today. Yeah, I could do with a nice long chisel now to get the stem of the daffodil there. Um, let's have a look. That's the boy, you got him. That that'll one? do him. Yeah, that'll do him. That, that one, you don't use this one now, you see. No, we don't use that much. Uh. That's one that in some ways is... Um, it's a bit big for... For the type of carving we do. Yeah, but the chisels get upset if you don't use them. See, they, they don't like it. They like to be used. See? That's right. You can't, you can't leave them in the, in the shed and in the garage. They've got to be used. Yeah. If they are left in the shed, anybody, make sure you put a bit of oil on them. and a bit of oil and look after yeah, them. Yeah, look after them in that old not, cold shed. Especially with the <laughs> older ones. It's, they're good steel and they don't make them like that any longer, unfortunately. Oh, well, look at that. I found that straight away then, look. Yeah, you get, you get in there. Yeah. There we are. A bit more there. And the wood you're using? Oh, it's a, it's not a very good bit of wood, Dave. It's, it's a poor bit of mahogany it is. Oh, dear me. You, a, you've got to be very skillful to, to, to work this out, this timber. That's a beautiful yeah. piece of mahogany, that is. Eh? That's a lovely piece of mahogany, that oh, is. Oh, come on now. That looks, it looks like a little piece of utility, is it? I think it's more like a bit of gaboon or something like that. I think it came from an old tea chest or something. There we are. I, I, is it going to take you longer to do that than it took me to do this? <laughs> he's, he's getting there. And you haven't explained anything of what you're doing. I, I can't. Mark out with a vertical grain. Yes, it's got a ver the grain's going that way. That's right. Yeah. There we go. And of course, if you want to carve a flower in Welsh, it's flower. Flower, yeah, like, I don't think that's quite right. But it's, no. Uh, <coughs> it's uh, blowed in, actually. But there we are. We've got to do a little bit down by here. There's, Did you shellac as well? Did you shellac that? Stick? Yes, I shellacked it. Yeah, there we are. yeah, I shellacked right. it. A little bit by there. Of course, a lot more work in this than I realised, Dave. No one knew did that, Daisy. Or was it a buttercup you did? I can't remember now. It's a daisy, isn't it? It's supposed to be a daisy, daisy, is it? I don't know. It's one or the other. Yeah. Uh, are look, you done? Are we, am I done? Dude. We've got this bit as well. Look, we, we're missing a bit there. We turn him round. Yeah. We turn him round. I, I... Go on then. Push it in. There we are. That's, that's there's there's that piece that's, that's been beautifully shellacked by me. There it is. Look. There you go. So that's okay. That's the first coat of shellac. And that we, we as I say, we put it on the sander, sand it all down. Yeah. And then anything that we notice that needs working on, I he's, he's shellac. But bully, I'm carved that. Yeah. I know, but uh, it won't hurt. There we are. Just to raise the grain a bit on it. Right. Yeah. Come yeah. on then, finish off the. I'll, I'll have to go over that. The it's quite a bit of work for me to do on that love spoon to finish it off properly. Finish off the daffodil. There we go then. We got Yelly coming in asking if we're finished. Well, that's a start anyway, isn't it? Okay. Well, put a put a coat of shellac on it. Put a coat. Well, no, I, no. There's quite a bit of work to do on this, but we will put a. Uh, as been as you insist. Put a coat of shellac on it. But there we are. Shellac. Thank you all again for joining us. Hopefully that's useful. Any follow-up questions or there's, anything there's, you've got, there's feel, Dave's. Free, feel free to ask us. There's Dave's. There's a beautiful, look at that. You've deliberately put too much shellac in there. Oh, look at this, look at this. Oh. How much shellac you got on that brush? <laughs> He's used half the bottle of shellac on that one, now. Huh? But there now we got this beautiful daffodil now. Hopefully. Oh, look at that. Oh, dear man. Hopefully that's useful. Any questions, anything at uh, all? Lovely little um, daffodil for you, dear. Anything here with the wood, with the carving, let us know, get it in. We're planning on doing regular live streams, so hopefully they're useful, hopefully they're interesting. And it's great, thank you all for, for joining us. And there we are. That's, we are. Uh, that's job done. Uh, well done, Thomas Wood Carver, you yeah. fantastic. I don't want to overshadow you, Dave, but I, I just, I think that's a better picture, Luxie. 
There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Thank, thank you as well, Tommy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for going through the list here. Andy, um, Harris. We've just got... Um, we got if if ticker. Uh, who else we got on here? Izzy as well. Thank you all for joining us. Midnight Joker, brilliant. Yoki da. as well. Very grateful to you all. All the best. Hope you have a good week, and we'll be back again soon. <coughs> our next live stream, and don't forget to have our video as always on Wednesday. Thank you all again.